Hi everyone! Wall Street ended last week with solid gains. The main US stock indices managed to extend their winning streaks, rising for four consecutive weeks. Positive earnings reports and overall optimism pushed indices higher. Following the release of CPI data, traders were confident that inflation has already peaked. They assumed that the Fed would slow down monetary tightening amid a drop in consumer prices. They expected a shift to a softer stand. However, Fed policymakers have made so far rather hawkish statements. Are their hopes false? The new week will shed more light on this matter. Some crucial reports and speeches of Fed officials are scheduled for this week. They are sure to provide more hints at the Fed's future plans for monetary policy. Investors are also anticipating their FOMC meeting minutes and retail sales data. They are also likely to find out whether the stock market has already finally bottomed or they are witnessing a fake rally. The new week kicked off on a negative note, as sentiment turned sour following China's fresh economic reports. Watch our video review till the end and leave your comments down below. Let's start. Investors are so tired of pessimistic news that they are prone to see positive signs if there are none. To some extent, market reaction to CPI data was quite reasonable, as it was the first inflation report of this year that did not disappoint market players. The consumer price index in July came in at 8.5% on annual basis and slightly decreased compared to last month. In July, the annual inflation rate in reached 9.1%. This was a rather modest and possibly temporary drop in the indicator. However, positive reading fueled optimism among investors, the government and U.S. citizens. Wall Street traders even ignored the hawkish comments of Fed officials that followed immediately after the publication of CPI data. It appears investors were so confident that inflation had peaked that they did not want to accept the opposite likelihood. Many Fed officials have warned that it is too early to slow the pace of monetary tightening. Almost all policymakers begged for the rate of hikes until the regulator brings inflation under control. So the central bank is unlikely to stop raising the key rate in the near future. This week, even more Fed members are going to deliver their speeches, as well as fresh market stats will help traders make more accurate conclusions. Retail sales data and the FOMC meeting minutes for July are the highlights of the week. Some analysts believe that these reports will hardly affect the Fed's current monetary policy. Many fresh reports will be released before the September meeting, including two inflation reports. This is why traders could pay zero attention to the upcoming speeches and reports. However, market is unpredictable. Perhaps these events may truly surprise speculators. Despite a drop at the start of the week, three benchmark indices have shown great results. The bullish momentum remains strong. The Dow Jones rose by 2.9%. Notably, all three indices managed to reach at least their three months highs. However, the near-term outlook is somewhat cloudy. The bear market lasted on average about six months. Stock indices lost about 30%. Has the equity market already bottomed, or perhaps traders should be bracing for a new bearish cycle? Analysts have entirely different points of views on the matter. Some economists believe that stocks could be gripped by volatility once again. However, next time their swings may be sharper. Others are more optimistic. They see signals indicating the bearish market has been coming to an end in recent weeks, pushing sellers out of the market and facilitating a recovery. The stock market is highly likely to have reached the bottom. If not, it may happen in the third quarter. Whether this is true or not, we will see in the near future. Investors are well aware of the main risks, so they have already factored them in. For this reason, stocks will hardly fall as all negative events have been priced in by traders. Naturally, there could be some force majeure. At the start of the new week, sentiment on Wall Street darkened due to a disappointing economic reports from China. Industrial production and retail sales data raised concerns about the slowdown in the global economy. Apart from that, investors are revising the prospects of the Fed's monetary policy. Investors did, not, did, take, did take notice of the comments by Fed officials that the regulator would stick to a hawkish stance despite some improvement in inflation data. The S&P 500 index advanced by 3.3% last week. It has approached the critical resistance range located at the lows of the first quarter. Its further dynamics should confirm whether the stock market has truly recovered. 
To maintain the bullish bias, the S&P needs to break and consolidate above the range of 4,170-4,180. Judging by its current trajectory, it is likely to keep climbing higher. The majority of traders do not expect a slump in the near future. They have factored in all the possible negative events. Besides, the Fed has still the opportunity to engineer a soft landing. Yet, like the stock market as a whole, the S&P 500 may sink, sink even without a recession. At the moment, the possible decrease is estimated at 5-10%. The main catalysts are the aggravation of economic indicators, a drop in the U.S. company's revenue, and the transition of goods for services consumption, which will lower corporate profits. A sharp decline in corporate profits may adversely affect the stock market in the short-term perspective for several months. The S&P could again return to 3,600. A decrease in stock indices at the beginning of the new week is nothing more but a correction. The S&P 500 resumed growth last week, breaking through the resistance level of 4,180. It means that traders should focus on long positions. However, they have been increasing their net positions on a decline in the S&P for two months. The net position of large traders has hit a two-year high, while the net position of hedges has been getting record highs for the fifth week in a row. This trend may eventually contribute to the drop in the S&P 500 index. Like other two main stock indices, the heavy tech Nasdaq 100 also advanced. Last week, it jumped by 3.1%. Therefore, the future movements of stocks hugely depend on the Fed's monetary policy. Inflation data triggered market uncertainty as opinions on the Fed's rate hikes were polarized. In August and September, speculators will continue to look for news, hints in fresh reports and Fed officials' comments. At the Jackson Hole Symposium scheduled for August 25-27, Jerome Powell is likely to provide more information about the regulator's future plans and dispel some rumors. However, some analysts believe that Powell could not get into detail speaking about already well-known facts. The thing is that Fed should be very careful with its words. The central bank realizes that the situation is quite difficult and any statements may be perceived incorrectly. For this reason, it does not provide long-term forecasts for inflation of the, or the economy. The Fed closely monitors fresh economic data before making any decision. So far, Fed policymakers have stated that at least one more drop in inflation should occur to consider a slowdown in monetary tightening. As there are no such events in the near future that could drastically change market sentiment, the bullish trend on stock exchanges is likely to persist. That's all for now. Subscribe to our channel and stay up to date with the latest market news. See you!